Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about do-it-yourself power wall solar inverter safety. Combine it all. Um, why am I making this video? Well, nothing bad happened. But I think it's important to talk about it since there are so many YouTube videos that uh, that uh, talk about how good the, the power walls are, how everybody's equipment is so good. But I haven't seen I haven't seen any videos on safety. So I want to talk about safety. I don't know if this video is going to be any good, but I think it might provide some good information for everyone uh, looking to get into this kind of stuff. So let's start with what I think are the important things in do-it-yourself power wall solar home integration safety of uh, stuff that we like to do and are interested in. So let's start with this fire extinguisher. Um, I think that is one of the most important things. This one can be used for uh, um, for gasoline fire, for electrical equipment fire, it can be used to, you know, turn off paper fire, house fire, whatever it is. Uh, I don't think it's suitable for these batteries, lithium ion phosphate, and according to everybody, they do not catch on fire. Um, I'm not willing to test it, but hey, as far as I know, they kind of just smoke and, you know, and after a while they stop smoking and that's it. However, I think it is important to have at least one nearby. I'm going to inquire about getting something that will be suitable even for these batteries. God forbid they catch on fire. Um, that is something on my schedule for next week. Now, let's go to other, other items. Can include also that what I think are important and should include a passive safety feature. There is a system that does not do any work until you are until you manually call it into the action. It can be a power wall disconnect switch, solar combiner disconnect, or anything that requires user input. Uh, that can be a uh, um, like that battery switch on top of the power wall. Uh, other devices are active safety feature devices such as uh, are those that help prevent catastrophic failures without any outside assistance. They work automatically. They, incur they, they include your DC breakers, your AC breakers. Uh, they can include, uh, they are included into your inverters like on these uh, LV5048s that we have over here that include the overload bypass, overload restart and these LV5048s they include breakers on themselves. Uh, another active safety system can be your BMS2 or it should be a BMS2. This is important because I believe my power walls are capable of delivering over 750 amps in a short circuit condition. Let's move on to example of passive system is this disconnect battery disconnect uh, switch. It requires manual input to disconnect power going from a power wall towards the distribution box and then into the inverters. Next thing would be that BMS. BMS that I use, uh, anything over 120 amps discharge or charge, it will uh, cut the load. It will not disconnect it completely, but it will cut the load down to three amps or so. Uh, in a case of a short circuit, it will disconnect completely short circuit is removed or it's not present anymore. Uh, next thing 
that is very important are circuit breakers. As we can see, we do have, I do have uh, breakers installed for the inverter input. Uh, they are 40 amp each. That is what is recommended by a uh, user manual and they are the ones responsible of supplying a grid power to the inverters. You should have them, you should not skip them. Um, always have safety device as a circuit breaker. In another box, there are circuit breakers for, uh, for inverter output and they go in the house panel. Um, I did not see anything in the user manual saying that they are required but they are there because inverters themselves have a overload bypass and overload restart which will probably help with that situation but I have installed it anyway. Now let's move on to DC circuit breaker. As you can see, I have three 100 amp DC circuit breakers. I decided to go with the UL listed equipment. I have tried different circuit breakers and fuses before, and I think that uh, DC circuit breakers that are UL listed are much more better and are much more safer for my system. And I think everybody should include those into their setup. These are made by CBI and as I said you are listed and also sold by Midnight Solar. They cost about roughly $38 I think each and I think they're very well worth it. They will trip at 125 amps or they have a preset delay time for a short circuit trip to. Now let's move on to the very important feature and that is how does this all work. I do have two active safety systems before the power even reaches the inverters. They are of course the BMS and a DC circuit breakers. Uh, the passive safety feature is that DC uh, disconnect switch there on top of the power walls. Uh, another passive safety system and, and it's not safety system as much as it, it is a monitoring system uh, is the balancers that I use. They give me a current status of uh, module voltage which can tell you if you are having a problem uh, if you continuously monitor it or if you keep an eye on it if you take a look at it every now and then um, it's not as much as a safety feature but hey it's right there it can help you determine if you are going to have upcoming problems now let's look at the close-up of BMS and let's look at the good BMS versus a bad BMS. I have purchased this uh, Dolly BMS back in uh, August of uh, last year. I think these devices are pretty much worthless. They do not have a temperature control, they don't have a temperature disconnect where it's not going to allow battery to be charged or discharge depending on a temperature. Another bad thing about these, uh, these BMSs is they only use a 6 gauge wire. Now this is supposed to run 150 amps either charging or discharging current. According to a uh, wire gauge chart the 6 gauge wire is only good up to 75 amps. Now I don't know how you're going to run 120, 130 or even 150 amps across these wires and not cause some kind of a problems because you do have two connections. You have one on 
right at the exit and then uh, you have a connection there and then they're looking for you to make a connection on this side too. Uh, you will have a voltage drop and then you will have this wire heating up too. I don't think I don't think this is really a, uh, a, a good thing to have on a BMS. I think BMSs should be designed like uh, this BMS over here. Uh, I only have a sample of these two. However, when I think about it, I think this one is a whole lot better designed than the other one. I have seen it in action. I have, I have run a bunch of tests with it, which I don't even have on the videos, but I wanted to know how these devices work. It has a good short circuit protection, has a cut load protection, 120 amps in, 120 amps out, and when they want you to connect the wire, they want you to spread current across the whole plate. That's why they include these connectors over here. And in the case of this one at the 120 amps, they want you to use a one odd uh, gauge uh, wire. And they want you to split that one gauge wire between all of these butt connectors on one side. On, I mean on the both sides. They want you to have a one odd gauge in and one odd gauge out. I think that is a whole lot better than this right here and this one is only 120 amps and this one is 150 amp that's that's why I think this one is designed a whole lot better now only time will tell however I know I have two of these and I know one of them is dead it's not working anymore I don't know why it died and whatnot um, so that's what I got to say about this. It's very important to have a good safety features in your system. Um, I'm not eloquent in talking behind the camera and trying to film and all of this. So I might, this might become a boring video. But let's look at the other stuff that I tried to use previously. And let's talk about those things too. Here's the example of what I used before. And I can tell you, this is a piece of junk. I don't care what kind of a ratings does it have on Amazon, but it did not work out real well for me, especially when I tried to do a short circuit test. The darn thing ended up fusing itself at so much current at one time. It says that it's UL1500 ignition protected and it has some other listings there too but after after having problems with them I returned to and I opened up to that failed and you can see inside that the contacts are really horrible and they are not doing they would never be doing that good of a job and you could also notice it as soon as you start running the higher current on them the voltage drop across it would become enormous so I eliminated this and I suggest you guys go with something that has been created uh, specifically for a DC side circuit breaker I would stay away from this Thank you and have a good one. Later.